Hello, this is Tom, a.k.a. Gerio here for Star Frontiers Gamer and Tabletop Taproom. And uh, we are doing Fanzine Friday number 25, which means we are doing the last Star Frontiersman in its first initial run. And share. so here we are, number 25. Um, a Star Frontiers Alpha Dawn Adventure is what it says right on the cover. It's got some great artwork here. Uh, I don't know what these things are, but they just look cool. Uh, but the story doesn't start there. It starts with number 24. If you remember when I did Fanzine 24, I talked about how two articles in here were support material for what was coming in Fanzine 25. And that was you get the Embecker Dance Starliner, full deck plan, full write-up. And uh, because that is the ship that is used in the beginning parts of the, of the adventure that is in 25. And then uh, there was, uh, what did we say, 40 or 60 creatures in um, uh, an article on just creatures for the planet that the player characters will be visiting. 40 or 60 of them, they were bonus creatures. They're in this issue. But you come over here and you find out that this adventure is called Balneum Blue. It's the name of the planet. And it's a, the whole magazine is an adventure. Uh, just And this is uh, the work of William Douglas. And I just recently exchanged emails with him. He's still kicking around just to... Uh, you know, uh, looking to do a move and a lot of stuff going on with his family. So there, uh, no chance right now in the short term of luring him back into contributing to the frontier, but we'll see. <clears throat> Anyhow, um, this, uh, so you get a whole write up on the planet here. You have a whole uh, adventure kickoff and uh, it's, it's a little bit of a, there's a little bit of a railroad. There's a little bit of sandbox, actually a lot of sandbox. And um, so, you know, I just saw they were covering special rules on going for a swim, hypothermia, uh, mild onset hypothermia, so on and so forth, because there's, this is a water-based adventure. And um, alpha subsection. We're not going to reveal the plot but it is a water world. Um, we get a little bit of a classified here for the Smiling Jacks Exploration and Charters. Uh, and so the uh, Smiling Jack uh, is a fixture in this adventure. And, oh, wait a minute. I was wrong. I said the Embecker Dance was the ship. This is the ship, Smiling Jack's um, ship. So you get this deck plan here. I was mistaken when I said the Embecker Dance. I, I could have swore it was the ship used. And that was why it was so cool that you had that support material in issue 24 for issue 25. But it, you still have the support material there. You got like 40 or 60 creatures uh, detailed. Uh, here, they've uh, emergency equipment tables and so on and so forth. Uh, this is a tail first a landing ship. Uh, looks to me, I would, if I had to guess, just looking at the side view, I would say we're in the hull size three to hull size four uh, size range. So right up on the ship and uh, some artwork, some cool underwater artwork. There's some underwater ruins. I'll, I'll say that much. And <laughs> I love this. Look at this cross section of that. I mean, it's just really kind of cool stuff. And and you could use this as the map and just flow chart it. Just circle areas, and make a flow chart. And uh, so it's a a water based civilization was on this planet. You know, so there's a lot of discovery and exploration going on here. Which to me uh, that 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 makes for a cool adventure. Yes, I've done things like. Uh, Port Lawrence CSI. That's not so much exploration, but, you know, police procedural murder mystery type of game. And those were fun. Um, 
But uh, example of a NASA cuneiform. So, oh, cuneiform. I mean, I thought this was going to be a, uh, a like a transistor circuit or some sort of thing. But uh, some examples of the cuneiform, the written language of the people that were there. You're exploring their ruins. Um, and then we get uh, some of their technology and how it works. You know, this is very, um, what was that? Uh, East, East of Eden series of sci-fi novels where dinosaurs had evolved and now they're encountering a human. And, uh, you know, and so the dinosaurs had technology, but they had technology where they modified living beings, living things uh, as their technology. So their submarine was actually a living sea creature, <clears throat> that kind of thing. So that's what this reminds me of. Uh, there's a lot of uh, diagrams here. You get some idea of what the NAFA uh, look like. The uh, lot of examples, illustrations of their equipment. And, you know, this is very much like Gamma World where you're trying to figure out equipment you don't understand. Kind of cool. Uh, lots of creatures. That is not a creature. That is a power armor. And um, what I'm dying to get to here, this is one of their craft, the Natha craft. Uh, you can see it's got that living creature ethic to it. More Natha craft. More. More. Uh, and eventually here, we're going to get into uh, creatures. So uh, we have a write-up here on the Natha. There's like a little bit of squid, a little bit of, I don't know, some more on Smiling Jack, NPCs with portraits. I like when people do portraits with NPCs. Oh, oh, that's my artwork. They stole it. <laughs> <laughs> They, had, they probably had my position, permission to use it. Uh, this is great. I don't remember seeing this draw aside artwork by uh, Davis. Uh, I kind of like him. And uh, Yazarian, some more Yazarians. Hey, I drew that picture. Pretty sure that's mine. Oh, that's Davis. I think he was copying one of mine. Um, that's my fingerprints on it. Oh, there's one by me. So this is, I love that they really worked hard to do character portraits for all the characters involved. Ooh. That reminds me of somebody else's artwork. So uh, this, this uh, Cahill Hishram, I believe that's a deviant art artist. And this is the section, this is the most amazing part about this whole thing. So you have this massive sandbox of a planet. You have a civilization that uh, appears to be in ruins and you're investigating it very uh, Gamma World style. Uh, you know, so you have all of that, but you have in this section another huge boatload of, of creatures. And we already had bonus boatload of creatures in issue 24. These aren't the bonus creatures. These are the creatures written for the adventure. Altogether, I think it's like 160, 180 creatures between the two issues of creatures created for this. It's like Ben Gorman, you know, sit down before you hurt yourself. I mean, you clearly had too much time on your hands, but nobody's really complaining because Better to have too, too many creatures than not enough, right? And they scrounged for artwork for these creatures, too. They really did. So they really worked hard at this. And I just think they knocked it out of the park. 180 creatures? It's mind-blowing. And then they didn't just stop there. They developed technology that's kind of a creature, you know. Um, I just, it, it, it's crazy how much background work went into this uh, just page after page after page of creatures. Like, this is kind of cool. What is that called? 
the armored ray. So it's like a cross between a turtle, turtle and a and a and a, a rayfish. Just upon and upon and upon and upon. Just more and more and more. And then final words from the editor. Um, you know, so you have some end credits here and final words. Um, as the editor of the Star Frontiersman for the past six issues, I've had a blast working with all the uh, writers and artists and fellow frontiersmen. My goal when I was asked to take over as head editor was to get the magazine back on track with a more regular release time. Little did I know I was to encounter several roadblocks to my goal. Uh, I had also decided that uh, uh, I would publish all of the remaining material in the Star Frontiersman queue uh, that I could as I was not receiving any more material at the time. All of this uh, was and is the subject to change as life happens. So with some planning, uh, a little arm twisting and a little begging, I was able uh, to secure more material and art for the uh, past uh, issues, 20 to 25 together. I found great covers and great artists to fill those gaps. William Douglas did a great job. And, um, you know, so, so I had been a major contributor up till, you know, my break with uh, Larry Moore. And uh, so, you know, if you need content, what, you know, do you have a theme? Do you, you know, are, are you doing spaceships this month? Are you doing such and such? Well, what are you doing? All right, I'll write something. I can write something. And, um, you know, and I can bang out usually the short, short articles, you know, just give me an idea. I can write on it for a couple of pages. So uh, he really had a struggle and he was cleaning out the, the back catalog of submissions, uh, stuff that we had kind of maybe pushed aside for one reason or another. We felt it was incomplete, needed a heavier editing. So he really had a job and he did a monumental task uh, here with the Star Frontiersmen from uh, issues 20 to 25, you know, and, and he needs to get a shout out for that. So William, you know, um, I have an idea of what sort of a task you had and, and, and how big it was. And, um, you know, I got to say, you did a great job as editor. Um, Changing Frontier, this is a handing off of the baton to the Frontier Explorer. Um, and uh, ba Balneum Blue by Ben Gorman. Uh, so this is just a little bit of like fiction, uh, just kind of some stage that they uh, threw on the back page of the uh, issue. So that is Star Frontiersman number 25. It is a complete adventure with supporting material in the previous issue. So all told, taking taken all told, I mean, you can just print this one issue and use it as a module. You don't even really need those bonus creatures, but you, you can. You can just take this and go, and it's a Star Frontiers module from the word go, but it is a massive sample. You have a whole planet as the sandbox and a mystery of a lost civilization going on there. And it's not your average thing because it is a water world it's a water adventure and so you can you can place this uh you don't have to use the setup for this adventure you could just have that the pcs the player characters are part of a scout service and they're using they're going out and uh, probing the dark exploring and they find this planet and they land on it and they discover things and maybe they have some problems uh along the way and total adventure so if you're looking for something new like i've not fully read everything in here i understand the basic outline of it like if you were running it and you're saying oh geez tom's in my game and uh i need an adventure that he's never read because i've read all the modules right <laughs> well this would be a good one to go with because i really haven't read every single thing in here i'm just absolutely enamored with how many creatures were created for this planet. It's, it's mind boggling. Uh, you know, Ben, sit down, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Um, the, the lengths to which they went to design this world and design this adventure. 
absolutely fabulous. And I love that it's a water adventure. And when Tammy hears it, cause she's been bugging me. So why don't you do some like water-based adventures? Because her first uh, major in college was marine biology. So she's been like, why don't you do some, you know, and I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. So she's going to, she's going to be like, you've been sitting on this. How come you haven't brought this out? <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to get it from the good wife uh, when she hears about this, but it is a full aquatic adventure and it's absolutely awesome material. So uh, yeah, uh, this was a great high point for them to end the star frontiersman on. And, and I salute uh, Ben Gorman. I salute uh, William Douglas these guys, these guys were like, all right, you know, Tom and Tom over at the Frontier Explorer think they're all that in a bag of chips because because we were trying to raise the bar uh, and, and present a much more professional kind of magazine. We, so we were trying to raise the bar. So we were like, yeah, we're doing that. And uh, they were like, oh, so they, oh, they, they think they think they're all that in a bag of chips. Uh, yeah, I'll see you more professional, and I'll and I'll raise you. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, this was a this was definitely uh, we got raised in the poker game, so to speak, if, if I could use the metaphor. Um, this was absolutely a high point for them to end the Star Frontiersman on, and um, you know, again, I salute my fellow Frontiersmen. You guys did a great job. And uh, we should aspire to do more content like this uh, in the future. So, you know, good on you guys. So this is Tom from Star Frontiers Gamer. Praising. Awesome piece of work. Very, very sandboxy. Little bit of a railroad in there. Uh, not too bad. And, um, but excellent adventure for you to use. And it's very sandboxy, so you can linger here as long as you like with, with your campaign. Um, very, very sandboxy. And there's so much material, so much support material for you with this to run a game. Just absolutely. And I'm sure that after you've run a game and the PCs return back to civilization, you could do a return to Bail Me in Blue. In fact... Ben, if you're out there, why don't you write that? You don't have to create the creatures. You just got to create the, uh, you know, create the, the story idea, you know, maybe a location or two, uh, you know, return to Bale, Bale Neum Blue. Uh, that would make a, you know, why, why not? Or Bale, Bale Neum Blue strikes back. You know? Uh, you know, I'm sure there's something that could be done, uh, you know, in this, so much work has been invested in creating this setting. Why not reuse this planet? So, uh, you know, Ben, if you're out there, give me a shout out. Um, we should talk. We should talk about a, a return to uh, Bale, Neon Blue. Uh, why not? I mean, it's absolutely fabulous material. So, Tom from Star Frontiers Gamer signing out. I want to thank my subscribers. You guys are great. Thanks for watching this video. Hope you guys continue to enjoy the Fanzine Friday as we go forward. Uh, I'm debating whether I want to just review a few Dragon magazines for the Star Frontiers content. They're not technically fanzines. Uh, or do I want to just jump straight over to the Frontier Explorer? Um, maybe we'll go Frontier Explorer. Uh, you know, chime in in the comments. And uh, I haven't fully made my decision yet. So, uh I guess we're done with the Star Frontiersmen, and uh, I'm going to say I will see you in the frontier and maybe even on Bill Neum Blue. <laughs>